Okay, so what have we done so far? We're going to continue on debugging this problem that we're having that is causing several of the MP0 test suites to fail. So what do we know at this point? We cleaned up our code, made it look all pretty and beautiful and, and removed any big pieces of unused code and things like that that might uh, prevent us from being able to read it effectively and trace and see what's happening. Okay, so we did that. Then we came to the test suites and we spent some time here in the failing test case. First of all, we, you know, uh, read the test suite a little bit and saw how things were ordered and realized, you know, if this fails then the other two tests are not going to succeed either. So we started to zero in on this test case as a potential problem. And we ran it by itself and we found out what was happening, which is that instead of returning a successful response, the, um, the response code on this request from the server is 404. We looked that up and it turns out that this is a pretty well-known error code that indicates the document was not found. Okay, so armed with this information, Let's go and look at the server code. Now, some of you are going to see the problem right away. That's cool. Congratulations. But we're going to work this systematically. Imagine that it's like 4.30 in the morning and, you know, you're running really low on sleep and you're not able to see something that might be super obvious. And sometimes that happens. And sometimes, like, particularly towards the end of a long creative session of building cool things is when your brain is tired and you make dumb mistakes and it can be hard to fix them. And so when that happens, actually, it's really great to have a system to fall back on, right? Where you can say, okay, I know a set of steps I can take. I don't have to rely on my spider sense or whatever, you know, on, on my ability to see these tiny differences. I have a system in place. The next thing that we're going to do, and again, it's something we will expect you to do when you come uh, ask for assistance on the project have your code cleaned up, have an understanding of what's going wrong, what part of the test suite is failing, and a little bit of knowledge about what's happening there and what should be happening and what actually is happening and why the test suite is failing. The next thing is we're going to start adding some instrumentation to our code. We want to see what is kind of like understand the flow of the code so that we can start to figure out what should be happening and what's not happening. Okay, so let's go over into the server code. Um, and there's a couple of different ways to approach this. What I like to do is it, it start to test hypotheses, okay? So for example, is this method, so this is where the get places method runs. This is what's supposed to return the list of places. Somehow this isn't working. So the first question is, is this code even running? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a print statement in here. Uh, I'm gonna say calling get places. Actually. Frequently what I'll do is I'll put a print statement somewhere that I think is going to execute because I don't even know if print is working, right? So I'll say uh, entering dispatch tree, that's what's right here. Okay, so let's run the code again because I'm expecting to see this print one. Um, if I don't see it, then something deeper is wrong and I'm not seeing print messages during testing, which can happen, but that's probably not what's happening here. Okay, so this says entering dispatch tree and I see that a couple of times. And now I see uh, 404, that's being printed by the test suite. Let's go ahead and take this out because I don't want to confuse myself. Um, so entering dispatch tree is being printed, but calling get places is not being printed. So somehow I am not entering this if statement. That's interesting. Okay, I should be. Why am I not? We'll, we'll keep working on that. So now let's make sure this is consistent with our earlier observations, right? So I'm gonna put a print statement down here. I'll say println, uh, oh no, and sometimes I use stronger language when I'm debugging, uh, but we'll just say, oh no's, uh, returning uh, 404 not found, right? We've already noticed that this is what's actually being returned because that's why the test suite is failing, is this error code 404, and that's actually what's happening right here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna run the test suite again. Um, and we'll see that entering dispatch tree, oh no's returning 404 not found. So there is in fact a 404 being returned, which lines up with what we suspected because we saw that in the test suite, right? When we put our, our print in the test suite. Okay, so what is happening? What's happening is I'm, enter, I, I'm, I'm not seeing a match. So this is actually why I'm looking, where the code is looking at the path that was passed and trying to figure out if it matches the path that it's expected, okay? 
And if it finds one, it responds, it enters these if statements and responds. And if it doesn't find one, it falls through to this 404 and that's what's happening. So, so now I have a much, much better understanding of what's going wrong. Um, now when you use, this is a style of debugging that's sometimes called printf debugging. Some people will make fun of you for using it, but those people don't write a lot of code. So that's cool because most people that do a lot of programming use this all the time. Um, and there's nothing to be ashamed about using it. It's a perfectly okay thing to do. Like I said, people that make fun of it are not really creating a lot of code, I would suspect, because people that do use it frequently. Are there other ways to do this? Yes, you'll learn about them in later courses. This is a perfectly acceptable approach and you should not feel ashamed for using it. In fact, feel just feel proud for building things. That's what this is all about. Who cares how, how you get there and this is a perfectly valid technique. Okay, so what, so in, in some, sort of one of the things we're doing with these print statements is we're testing hypotheses. And as you get better and better at this type of debugging, you're going to get better and better at figuring out what to display. So, you know, sometimes people come and they ask for help and they've got print statements all over the place. And at some point, if you're putting a lot of these in, it gets really confusing because there's so much output. You're like, oh gosh, what's going on? It's hard to see what's happening. But as you get better and better, as you get more and more strategic at figuring out, okay, what should I be printing out, right? Okay, so here's the thing. I've got two things that need to be true to enter this if statement. One is that the path is, is supposed to be equal to place and the method is supposed to be equal to get. So let's print off those things up here uh, and I'll print path plus uh, method. I'm just gonna print these at the top because what I'm trying to figure out is why am, why am I not getting in here? And there's two reasons. It could be the method is wrong or it could be that the path is wrong. Okay, let's go ahead and run this again. And now we're gonna scroll down here and we're gonna see entering dispatch, there's, this, uh, there's the first request for this empty path and that one ends up here. This is used by the client during startup to just establish that the server is there, so that's okay. There's a call to reset, which is used by the test suite to just make sure that the server is in the right state to start testing. Uh, you might be wondering where these are coming from. Uh, if we look up here, before every test runs, there's this call to server.reset and that's what generates that path. But then there's a request for places. And okay, again, it's 4.35 now in the morning and I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh geez, okay. It's just, I just fat fingered this, right? Now the question becomes, you know, and this is frequently true when you're testing stuff, who's right, right? The test suite is using places, the route tree is using place. Um, and so now I might go ahead and look at like other parts of my application. So I might go over here to the client and look at the fact that the client is using places. I might also, you know, uh, there might be some documentation or other parts of the code that are broken. Or I might just remember that like, oh yeah, a minute ago I was messing around with this and trying different things just to see how it worked and maybe I broke it. Um, okay, so let's try fixing it, right? Let's try putting this places back in here. Um, so now I'll go ahead and run the, run the test again, and boom, there it is succeeding. Now, um, next thing I would do, the other thing with uh, printf debugging is it can be very, very tempting to, once you're done, be like, rip out all the print statements right away because they're ugly and cluttering up the code. But no, 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 we, we do want to do that, but we also actually want to make sure that we solve the problem. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to run the whole MP0 test suite because my, remember my hypothesis from earlier was that this test failing was causing uh, the other tests that were failing as part of the test suite. Um, and so fixing this should fix everything because the client will now work and the activity will show the right places. And sure enough, when I run this, everything is green again and I'm good. So now, definitely, I would say, go ahead and clean up these print statements. I'm gonna delete this one. I'm gonna delete this one. Um, and let's see here. So let me run this again and I think, that I've, yeah, I think I've dropped everything that I didn't want. Okay, good. So that is, you know, a, a guide to, to printf debugging. And in general, when you're using printf debugging, what you wanna be doing is testing hypotheses. You wanna be thinking, okay, what's wrong? So it, it's also possible, for example, oh wait, hold on, I didn't get all of it. <laughs> um, it's also possible, for example, that uh, there was something wrong with our get places method. Like maybe that was broken, right? Maybe our load places method was broken. There's like a lot of different ways that this could have gone wrong. 
But by putting in print statements, it allows me to narrow down the situation. So first of all, it's just like something's broken. Then I realize, okay, what's happening is I have a 404. So I have some sense of the fact that this isn't entered. Well, first of all, I need to figure out where is the 404. Um, if I did a control F for 404, I would find that I'm entering down here. Now the question is, why am I not getting to this get places method? Remember, I put a print statement in here that demonstrated that I wasn't entering this if statement. Then I put a print statement up here to show me why, right? So, so you know, frequently early on in the printf process, you're figuring out what's going wrong, and then you're using more println statements to figure out why, right? What what is happening? What's different about the state of the world from what my program expected that's causing it to behave differently than I anticipated? So again. When you're getting started with this debugging technique, you'll tend to put in a lot of print statements, way more than you need. As you get better at it, you'll use fewer um, and you'll get better at having a sense of where to put them uh, for sort of maximum efficiency. So you, so you gather a lot of information about the system at once, but doing this effectively uh, is a completely valid debugging strategy and one that, like I said, real programmers use all the time. Um, so, okay. Now we're, we have some new techniques. We're going to clean up our code. We're going to figure out what's going wrong. And then we're going to start doing some tracing on the code that's affected to try to understand what's happening. Doing those things, you know, at that point, if you're still stuck, come and ask for help and we'll help. If you have done some of those things, it will also make your help session go a lot more smoothly because this is also useful information to the person who is guiding you. So having done this, will mean that once you get to the help site, you know, not only will we see that, hey, you know, they're doing the right thing in terms of, you know, empowering themselves to solve things on their own, but now we have some of the information that we might need to help you solve the problem.